Welcome to this edition of Inside the Humidor. I'm Josh Eagle alongside Ed Brandyberry and Ryan Ponest, and we are inside the Humidor at the Smokestack in Moon Township. We have a fun show about yep. Alec Bradley cigars today. We're going to talk about the gift packs. We're going to talk about the new releases. We're going to talk a bit about the company. We might even get crazy and talk about Filthy Hooligan. <laughs> Stories of IPCPR. You never know what you're going to get. Stay tuned. Welcome back to Inside the Humidor. I'm Josh Eagle alongside certified tobacconist Ed Brandyberry, and we have a special guest today, Ryan Ponest from Alec Bradley Cigars. He's a local cigar aficionado and lover. Yeah, let's not go that far, but yeah, <laughs> lover. We'll go with lover. I don't know. I think he knows what he's talking about. <laughs> yeah, I I We're about to listen to him. So uh, that's right. That's right. He's welcome. alongside certified tobacconist Ed Brandyberry. Absolutely. Right. Thank you for having me. You're quite welcome. We're excited to have you with us. That's good. That's the good. Uh, the road that brings you here, or that brings you to Alec Bradley. 279. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Open today. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> wait, Surprisingly. Wait, we, won't, we won't tell the folks that you're a South. Yeah, I'm a South Hills Mon guy. Valley guy. I, I am a yeah. South Hills guy. South if Hills you want to call guy. me that, I'm in the... I'm in the Pennsylvania version of, of Pittsburgh. <laughs> so, yeah, if you want to call it that. Well, tell us, how did you get in the cigars? Yeah. Um, it, it's just sort of been a it's been a snowball effect. It really has. Um, uh, I started smoking the day I turned 18, not a day before, just for whatever reason. Uh, Good answer. Buddy. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. By the books, that's me. Um, I just got interested in cigars right off the bat. It was like, that was the thing I was going to do when I turned 18 to celebrate. Mm -hmm. And I don't know if maybe it was the whole, you know, the romance of, of yeah, this is a celebratory thing. I'm going to light up a cigar. I'm going to have a good time. Um, you know, that's that's how I got started with it. And uh, it just snowballed ever since. Um, a buddy of mine that lived up the road from me, he could actually see down to my house, and he's a cigar smoker himself. Um he would actually see me out on the back patio smoking cigars and one day he approached me and uh he said hey i always see you smoking cigars out there i smoke from time to time too he goes did you know that there was a guy uh from the area who opened up a cigar shop that has a hook for an arm and i said no i didn't know that and he goes you gotta buy your cigars from a guy with a hook for an arm and i said you know what he's he's right absolutely there's, there's nobody else you can buy from um except smokestack you know but uh, if you're in the moon area. Uh, we weren't there. So, yeah, uh, that's how I met uh, Tim Kolich of uh, Dirty Dog Cigar Shop. Great guy. Later on, I would begin working for Tim, um, sort of part-time moonlighting. And, uh, you know, from meeting Tim there and meeting a couple of reps, you know, a couple of reps took a liking to me. Sam Smirkle from Drew Estates, shout out. Um, he, uh, he sort of took me under his wing and started showing me the ropes, and I just got more and more interested in it. He's a um, great guy. Absolutely. The... Uh, you know, I love cigars themselves, but the industry itself really spoke to me. You know, being from Pittsburgh, um, I like to think that we're, we're a city that's deep in tradition. We're deep in hard work. We're deep in, you know, giving some of your word and doing a handshake. And it's just very old school, kind of the way you're, you're brought up. And the industry is very much like that. You know, yes, you, yes. you get out there, and it's, it's what I like to say. It's all handshakes and reputation. You know, you tell somebody you're going to do something, you do it. Um, and you get to know people, and that's what opens doors. Not not a resume, you know, not all the things that you went to, to college for, you know, all your accomplishments. It's the people that you know and, and doing good on the people that you know. And, and that was really awesome for me. That's that's uh, been our experience also, yes. being in yeah. the cigar world. It's a, it's a great, uh, the camaraderie, the, the way that it goes, how you meet people, how you make connections is old school. Absolutely. Even uh, cigar company owners and executives even though they aren't necessarily buddy buddies with each other yeah there is a camaraderie yeah. even even then i mean there's a there's a uh a, a g uh it's like a congenial yeah. approach yeah. Mm -hmm. to, to one another it's like a fraternity general. almost yeah, yeah. Absolutely. It, it's yeah. like you know even uh the reps when you do these multi vendor events mm -hmm. you know the reps go and they stand with each other on the side and they talk to each other you know um, we talk about, hey, do you hear, you know, this shop's opening up somewhere, you know, we, there's this new place doing this, or hey, so-and-so allows cigars in their place now. 
Um, there's a lot of information back and forth, even if you're not necessarily on the same team. It's sort of like you know you're you're working right. towards a greater thing, which is what all yeah. Do. There's a common goal in cigars. Yes, yeah, absolutely. That right. um, you really other industries that I've been involved in that that doesn't really duplicate itself. I mean. There's a, it, it's just, even though it's a, what you consider a large industry, it's actually very small. Yeah. It's a very yeah. small community, and yeah. we see that when we go to the conventions. You see right. the same people yeah. year after year. Yeah. I mean, from the consumer to the, you know, to the owner, the shop owner, it's actually small. And, and the more you go right. to these things and the more events mm -hmm. you go out and do, it's crazy how many times you see the same people. Yeah. And you would think that, it would, you know, a nationwide, worldwide industry – that you wouldn't run into the same people constantly, in it, but it is. It's a niche. No, it very market. much is. You know, there's there's shops. You know, when I was in retail myself, working under Tim, you know, there were shops that were from other states that we didn't know these people. We never went to their shops, but you know, maybe down at the trade show, we mm -hmm. met for a cigar one night. And we happened to talk to each other, and you know, we still keep in contact with each other. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that, that's exactly you know, right. And it, it's crazy how even yeah. you know getting into this position. You know, a lot of those people that were acquaintances where we shared a cigar one night, they become customers and they become friends, you know. So Absolutely. Right job, so. You know, Ed was just on a cruise. We talked about it on the last episode. He made, like, ten new friends. Over I, I, cigars. Yeah. And I think you guys are going to, some of them are probably going to keep yeah, in contact. we're planning on gaily when another one's vacationing in certain parts of the country, let the other guys know, and we're going to try to get together. I think cigars... It, it's sort of the perfect version of a bar. You know, everybody would like to think that the neighborhood bar is like Cheers. It's absolutely um, not. Except yeah. it's totally not. You go out there, you, you, you throw a couple back, you know, the next guy over says you something. You stare at the wall. Yeah, the next guy over starts talking about how he's from Baltimore. You mouth off to him. You know, somebody looks at your girlfriend wrong. You get upset with them. You know, it, it's just a... But it's not that way no, here. No, it's not no. that way here. You know, and, and one of the coolest things uh, I, I ever had an experience with was there was a time when I was driving home, and I live in Regent Square in Pittsburgh. I was driving home, and there was a, a local bar restaurant, and they had outside seating in the summer. And there was a guy out there smoking a cigar, and I don't know what it is. I was just sitting at a red light, and I looked out, and I was watching this guy smoke a cigar. He was sitting by himself. And I said, you know what? I'm going to pull over. And I pulled over. I got out of my car, walked up. I introduced the guy. We swapped a couple cigars. I bought him a beer. And, you know, to this day, I don't, I don't know who the guy was or remember his name. But we, it was just amazing that two complete strangers could sit down with yeah. no reason to talk to each other other than this. And we could walk out that day feeling good about the conversation, you know, Absolutely. feeling good about the interaction. No, that's a, that's a great point. We've we've hit on that on a few past episodes, yes. and just the world in general of cigars is why we love it, and actually why we're sitting here talking to you about it. Uh, you know, Jim doesn't have to be doing this right now, but he has a love for cigars. The guy behind this whole thing, the guy behind the scenes making it all happen, uh, he's doing this on his own time, uh, just because he loves cigars. We're actually filming he a is. television show. Yeah. Why do I? Keep getting a check voucher. Oh, I didn't, realize a, I didn't realize the bill was coming in the mail. Oh, of course, of course. Yeah, just kidding. But with Alex Bradley, let's talk a little bit right now. Sure. Ryan was uh, nice enough to give us a post embargo, a Absolutely. limited release Alec Bradley cigar, which we're enjoying for the first time. And uh, it's it's interesting. It's it's good. It's it got is. some different flavors going on. Talk a little bit about the blend here to start. Uh, the post embargo is mostly going to be Honduran Nicaraguan. Uh -huh. The idea behind this cigar was, um, you know, everybody's talking about Cuban cigars right now, and it's a big thing. And you know, there you hear a bunch of different points from from consumers, from people in the business, whatever. And this was something where we wanted to celebrate, not just being able to welcome Cuba back into humidors. But as well for the accomplishments that Honduras and Nicaragua has done during the time that Cuba was not able to just yeah, and sell to us. Don't forget you know, about the Dominican too. Oh well, yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I mean that, that's the thing. I'm, I'm, we've had this Cuban cigar talk multiple times. You know, even I've talked to you guys about right. it, and it's just one of those things where does Cuba make some of the best cigars in the world? Absolutely. But you know, times have changed, and these other countries have just come. They're in the mix. Oh, now. It's, it's, yeah, yeah. You know, yeah. they're in the mix. They're not the, the leader in the clubhouse. They're in absolutely, the mix. Yeah. absolutely. You know, I, I think you could look at any of these countries and you could pick out certain blends, certain mm -hmm. cigars that, that are, you know, predominantly out of their tobaccos. And we, we've talked about the coup de grace of cigar industry as if the Cubans, the Nicaraguans, the Hondurans, and the Dominicans made a blended 
I mean, this could be uh, just yeah. something. I don't know if that will ever happen. You know, it's a good thing that I, uh, a good way of looking at it, and I'll credit uh, Sam Smarkle with Drew Estates for, for this commentary because I thought it was just so beautiful and so elegant. Um, he said, am I looking forward to Cuban cigars? No. Um, am I looking forward to seeing some of these guys that have maybe left Cuba, um, some of these great blenders that we know now get back into cigars? Um, and start blending with Cuban tobacco. Oh man! It's like Rembrandt being able to paint with another color. Right. And right, I thought right. that was very well put. And yeah. and you know it, that's what I'm waiting. For. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I'm waiting for these guys that are heads of these factories in Nicaragua and Honduras that are from Cuban descent that have the knowledge and they might have that one leaf that they're really looking for that you could just. It would be, that would be, the, blending with yeah. with the Cuban tobacco yeah. would be just. It's like discovering bacon for the first it, time. It would be like discovering <laughs> bacon for the first time. Where would we be with Hanukkah? No. I don't know. So, this cigar, you, how many are you doing? Uh, so, the limited release this year will actually be 1,000 boxes of Robusto, 1,000 of Toro, 1,000 of Gordo, and 500 in Lancero. And that um, may sound like a lot out there in TV land, but actually... For a large company like Alec Bradley, that's yeah. actually a very small number of, of yeah. production boxes. Yeah, absolutely. And you'll, um, you'll want to get your hands on one of those. Definitely. Yeah. So, some new stuff. We've been talking about IPCPR and how awesome New Orleans is. Uh, <laughs> the show was awesome, yes. <laughs> New, Orleans, uh, New Orleans, your food is fantastic. Your music is great. The, the, the nightlife was excellent, but... Um, I'm happy to be out. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Now, New Orleans was wonderful. If I could go back, make it a non-business trip, it would be very music and, believe it or not, food oriented. I know really? it might come as a shock <laughs> yeah. to you, but um, it's just um, it's just one of those things where I was happy to come home when I was there. Didn't mm -hmm. have to deal with the heat, the humidity, anything. I think like Josh, that. Josh, were yeah, here. yeah, yeah, yeah. I could probably tell a story or two. Yeah. Next episode, man. Absolutely, absolutely. I'm sure Trials and tribulations of New Orleans. But next year's trade show, you know, we're already gearing up for it. It's in Las Vegas, back where it Maybe should be. We'll have a booth. <laughs> but you guys had some great stuff come out this year. Why don't you talk a little bit, Ryan, about what came out? Yeah. In 2015, I presume. No, absolutely. Um, Alec Bradley, um, they, they've really been coming out with some awesome stuff. Uh, Ralph Montero is our senior VP. He's our master blender, uh, Cuban origin. He has done basically the entire line with Alec Bradley since the beginning, but... Um, he's really, really on top of his game right now with a lot of the cigars he's coming out with, whether it's the Post Embargo here. Um, we've come out with uh, the Tempest Nicaragua, which I have here. It's a beautiful Tempest uh, that, that's comprised pretty much all Nicaraguan tobacco, six different uh, Nicaraguan tobaccos in it, one on the wrapper, two on the binder, three on the filler. And, uh, you know, it was funny because even going into the trade show, this was sort of like the, uh, the ghost for me because I saw it show up on the price sheet before we were going there, and I hadn't heard anything talked about it. Um, and to show up the show and find out it's it's predominantly, you know, Nicaraguan tobacco. I'm like, well, we just did the Nica Puro. That was an all-Nicaraguan cigar, you know. What could this really be? And I lit it up, and I was just blown away by it. it yeah. It's one of my It's a favorites. different cigar than the mm -hmm. Nica Puro. Oh, absolutely. Sure. And that, going back to, as we were talking about, the blending, it's just one of those things that's amazing how absolutely. you can focus on tobacco from one region, and you can come out with so many variants. That's you know, right. It, yeah. it's, it's, it's really amazing. It depends on the valley, uh, the valley it's coming from. Mm -hmm. It depends on the field it comes up from. Mm -hmm. yeah. It depends on the part of the plant. Yeah. You know, what priming is it? What what are you going to use? Are you going to use Omotempe? What, Third what, priming? What the air point before right. you fertilized it. Yeah, yeah, that could yeah, all play. Right. We don't even know. No, We're right, just getting right. into it. Yeah. <laughs> you know, it's the truth. No, if a serious. bird made a dropping, you know. Yeah. yeah. It's, 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 it's it, very it gets, bizarre. Yes, and, it, and that's where it gets so technical, and that's where the blenders come in, too. When we had a conversation mm -hmm. with Ricky Rodriguez, I asked a question right to him. I know you're out of that tobacco. You can't have a line that goes for 25 years and still have that crop. What did you do? That yeah. is where the blender makes their money. Yeah. Right, because right. they have to take, even if it's the same Every seed, grown the crop. same thing, they yeah. might have to add a different leaf mm -hmm. to make it taste the same. And they get to the point where your palate can't tell. Their palates might right. be able to tell yeah. minutely, yeah. but the consumer palate cannot oh, tell. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. Which is, a, which is a, that's a talent. Yeah. That's a super talent. Because uh, yeah. that's impossible that's to have a 20-year production cigar that was grown right. in the same field. It's not right. possible. Right. I mean, it would, the, the tobacco that it would take, it's impossible. So there is a new year. 
There right. is new weather. There right. are new conditions. There are new soil conditions. People do additives to the soil, but you can't control Mother Nature. Well, it's like the guys out there grow tomatoes and make their own salsa. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Tomatoes and peppers. Oh, my salsa isn't as good this year as it was last year. Yeah. I grew it in the same garden. It's, it's really mm -hmm. amazing yeah. with what is probably perceived as a very simple product, how much it's goes into not. it. it well, it's, it's not simple. If anybody it's, wants to really get into cigars and do it, you, you have to go to the fields and factory, mm -hmm. and you have to take a look around. You have to research that online, look at what this process is. This is an artisan process. Yeah, absolutely. These are a art form all on themselves. The process is, is scientific, beautiful, artistic. There's all those things that gets to what we're smoking yeah. with a little band that someone's got to go out there and, and brand and sell. Yeah. And there's a ton of good ones in today's market. So being that being said that there's a ton of good ones in today's market, Alec Bradley in 2011 won Cigar of the Year with the Prensado. Absolutely. And it's still going strong. It's, it's, it's a very beautiful cigar. Um, that cigar has just become such a, a catalyst for the company. Um, just because, realistically, you know, and, and it's funny hearing that you, you made the comment about us being a big company. Um, you know, I think in the grand scheme of things, we're, we're really right on that medium category yeah. where we're, we're just bursting out. Because it's really been a very, very short lifespan for Alec Bradley so far. Um, you know, you look at some of these companies and how long they've been doing this stuff, and, you know, we're, we're just 15 years old, you know. Oh, man, it's, it's, really, it's, it's a speck, you know, and, mm -hmm. and, and um, you know, and it, it's by all means a, a, an accomplishment to get that far, but it there's is. just so much more, you know, to go. And, and You I know, think, and maybe, you know, pardon for my speaking, when you're saying it's a large company there, though, but when you ha once you get a number one status absolutely. in cigar aficionado, and, and that's what I was tying you into. are now yes you are now a large yeah, company absolutely the 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 pressure is on at yeah. that point yeah um, perform mm -hmm. it's okay you gave me Prensado. where are you going to give right. me next no right? absolutely yeah. and, and anybody you know um, that gets the cigar of the year it, it, I think probably everybody could say it's the best of times it's the worst of times you know and I wasn't around for when we hit it but you know. Just having a cigar that you're just basically keeping up with the volume of business that you're doing at that time, and then the demand that follows within 24 hours, yeah. it's just, you don't know. it's unreal. I mean, it really is. Ex I, explain I, I to them that the guys. company does not know that they won that until the magazine no, hits the shelf. That's that's very true. We uh, <laughs> for, I heard the story from uh, George Sosa, our VP of sales. Uh, he was telling the story the other day, and, and it was literally like people were calling up, give me 20 boxes, give me 10 boxes, give me 40 boxes, you know. And they these were, like, were onesie twosie people before. Yeah, absolutely. Right, and you know right. they had to get on the phone with you know they were walking through the cubicles and the phones are going crazy and one of them's like what's going on, and they pick up the phone to introduce themselves and say you know can I ask why you haven't done anything with this cigar now all of a sudden you have this interest in it and they're like oh don't you know you hit cigar of the year you know mm -hmm. it's just one of those things where you know it, it's it changes the company store. overnight absolutely absolutely. Well, the story with one of your competitors that won last year the the Oliva Milano. Right. Always a good cigar. Absolutely. But the cigar of the year was their slowest moving Vitola. Yep. In the whole line. Yes. So when people sort, when people are making cigars, these companies they they're sorting tobacco leaves according to sizes of cigars they're going to make and they set aside the tobaccos accordingly. Right. And if you said about you don't, you don't tobaccos no, to make robustos, torpedoes, and Churchills, you don't know. and all of a sudden you've got to make, then then you it, it puts a lot. I think it puts a lot of companies in a very difficult place because there's this pressure to deliver, but there's also the pressure to keep the consistency up, mm -hmm. and I think that's really what puts because that's in what place. I was just talking about. Absolutely, there's no way to have that you same tobacco, no the one that hit you when you run out of it, and the demand is still here. The blender has to make sure that that cigar tastes the same, even when you have to use another crop, which is crazy. But we're talking about hitting the number one cigar. The pressure to duplicate it, in my opinion, I think Alec Bradley then hit a wall to try to duplicate this instead of doing what they do to trying to duplicate the Prensado for a couple years. This is before you got there. For a couple of years, Alec Bradley tries to just come out with the next Prensado instead of coming out with something completely different, which I think this year 
they've knocked out of the, the park yeah. with the introduction right. of the, the Nicaraguan tobaccos and some other things that it's not all Well, they really started that some last year, but they didn't get the play on it. I until this year, mm -hmm. I think, I think um, you know, and and from what I understand, as it's been told to me, you know, Ralph, our master blender, like I said, does phenomenal work. You know, you got to look at these blenders like chefs. Absolutely. And, you know, I I was watching. I remember there was a show on CNBC where they were following around these different, you know, um, up and coming, you know, eateries in New York City. Mm -hmm. And it was funny, this one guy brought a chef in, and the chef would eat, you know, prepare something, be like, here, try this, and he eats it. And the guy goes, that's so salty, but you have to train these chefs because to them, their palate is so specific where he might not taste any of that salt to him. So to him, it needs more salt, but to you and probably the consumer, there's so much salt in there that, that you have to do something about it. And, uh, you know, Ralph, he began to really appreciate the tobacco out of Honduras, you know, so we, we used a lot of Honduras over the years. And I think maybe getting into the Nicaraguan a little bit over the last few years, it might have been a little bit out of his comfort zone. He's been doing some wonderful work with, with the different Nico tobacco. Nicaraguan was a real good cigar. Absolutely. Good cigar. I think Absolutely. what hurt Nicaraguan was you guys came out with Mundial probably not more than a quarter later. I could be wrong about that. Uh, to be honest, I mean, that's 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 in the history of the company where I'm a little foggy on. I remember we had Mundial and Raices come out two years ago at the show together. Um, and I want to say maybe Nika Pura was right before the show. That, right. that sounds about right. Yeah, I think you're right. And, and at least when you get that going on that way, and you're introducing a cigar in a retail establishment, like yeah. you understand, yeah. you get, you're turning people on to this. Well, here's the next one. And well, they've just gotten them used to smoking a Nikapuro or or you know that's the one whatever. thing about um, let's just take uh, there's another company that Mark was on the show from from Ashton, they come out with a cigar once every nine years, <laughs> which is probably on the extreme end of what you should probably do, but a couple cigars a year is a nice introduction. Mm -hmm. But what Alec Bradley has done this year is they've come out with a bunch of different price points and a bunch of different cigars that aren't even, one isn't really even related to the next. Would you agree? Yeah, yeah. I mean, we, we, we definitely did a lot of different different. And then some rebranding also, yeah, which, is that, even, which can help. The, the, the Tempest extensions. They've done yeah. the extensions, yeah. too. So you have the Tempest Natural, the Tempest Maduro. Now they've had Tempest Nicaragua. Yeah. You have the Nicapuro. The and Nica the Pura Rosado. And in the Rosado. So yeah. they've, this year they've we, extended it. We did two line extensions. You know, the Tempest line extension was the Nicaraguan, which I talked about. Um, the Tempest Nicaragua featured a brand new um, remodeled version of the Tempest band, as well as a foot band that, that denoted it was the Nicaraguan. Mm -hmm. The Tempest, uh, well, what was formerly just called Tempest is now Tempest Natural. Um, we took that, did a new band with that, and as well with the Tempest Maduro, new box art, just cleaned it up, made it a little fresher mm -hmm. looking, very appealing, you know, when and you're tie in. the line together. Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, the Nika Puro, we released the Nika Rosado, and that Rosado wrapper on there just adds such a really nice, um, uh, you know, just a little bit more of a twist and a turn as, as opposed to the regular Nika Puro, which was a little bit more linear. Um, you light it up, uh, and it, it's sort of the same cigar all the way through, which is really nice if you're that kind of smoker. But some guys like a little twist and a turn, and that's where the Rosado came in. It's a little bit more mellowed out, which which I kind of really appreciated. And and the Rosado wrapper, yeah. what a lot of people don't realize is that Rosado wrapper is a, is a color that you don't find in a lot of it, it tends, tobacco, that reddish. Mm -hmm. It tends to be know. red, a little bit golden at times. Yeah, it's, yeah. It's, it's a very unique looking wrapper, and it's yeah, very beautiful. Good looking, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So we've come out with some IPCPO. What else did we come out with? Coil? Sanctum. Sanctum. There Sanctum. we go. Sanctum was the big one. Um, Sanctum we actually released before the trade show. Uh, Honduran Corojo wrapper, Costa Rican binder, Honduran... Uh, Honduran and some Colombian on the filler. It, that was another great example of Ralph getting out of the, you know, like a quarterback sort of getting out of the, uh, out of the pocket, out of the pocket oh, yeah. and just, you know, throwing and coming up big with it. And uh, that cigar and is I just, love that cigar. Yeah, no, you you actually, uh, we just did an event recently. I told you. And was uh, he, was, he was smoking the double Gordo, and um, you were really surprised at that. It's an eight yeah. and a half by 60. Oh, and, yeah, and great. You lit up as sort of a gimmick, and the whole time he, he just kept smoking that cigar like, I can't believe it's still consistent. I can't believe there's still flavor. I can't I mean, believe it's not falling apart. Is. I mean, I smoked it on a drive. Okay? Yeah, I like to take Churchills or bigger when I'm on or a Gordo size when I'm going on a drive, and 
I just, I smoked that halfway to yeah. Harrisburg or more. Yeah. <laughs> and, and, and seriously, yeah. uh, from beginning to end, I said to my wife, I said, you know, Fran, this is a cigar that I've enjoyed all the way through. I was, Which it's a you fan can't thing. always say that. Well, not this giant cigar. Yeah, a lot of We actually need to get one and show the audience one of these things. Eddie, you mind grabbing sure. one of those? Sure, things? I'll get one. We are inside the humidor. We have access to the giant sanctum. <laughs> Don't mind us. Just getting a little cigar to show you, because this is one you got to see. you got to compare these. Yes. So, <laughs> for some comparison, <laughs> the traditional Robusto is right here. A nice five-inch yeah. cigar, 50 gauge. A five by 50 traditional robusto. This very traditional size is eight the double gordo. Gordo, <laughs> the eight and a half sixty. And you can tell the difference. And this cigar smokes almost like this cigar, which is pretty yeah. amazing. We did. Uh, there was four sizes total, and out of those four sizes, again. there was only two ring gauges. Difference here. Um, you know, and I, that was very much done purposely. <laughs> I don't know those if that those shows were blended up, for that size. It's great. Yeah. We can see the end of that, and it's uh, you know, it's just. That's a celebratory cigar right there. That's, that when, is, you, that's when you got the raise. That is, uh, that's such a celebratory you cigar. It, Whenever it, you light it up to celebrate, married or divorced. Something, something else will probably happen in the duration that by the time you're done, you'll be celebrating. <laughs> right, yeah, exactly. Right, right. That's so how long. much of a celebratory. There's a new, there's yeah. a new celebration. There's a new cigar. celebration by the time you had two done. kids by the time it was over. Yeah. <laughs> so that's a great cigar. I love Sanctum. We, we brought it into yeah. the shop here in Moon. We uh, haven't brought the other... Not one that they came out with just before the, the coil. All in due time. All in oh, due time. Yeah, we did do the coil. Mm. Yeah. Coil is another one, nice medium, medium mm. plus cigar. Um, we tend to front load a lot of our products. Um, you light that one up, you'll get a nice rush of pepper, and it sort of simmers down. You'll get a nice buttery mm. cocoa. This was this was exactly like that. The the post yeah. embargo yeah. It started off a gang bust, yeah. man, and it's mellowed out a lot. But the flavors are still it's great in this great cigar. Flavor. I like this cigar great a lot. flavor on this. Um, the holidays are coming up. Holidays are coming Holidays up. Holidays are coming up, and we got some great tubo samplers. Tubo samplers yeah. that I love. These are these are actually our best-selling uh, uh, tubo collection, our best-selling sampler, sampler of last yeah. year last of 2014. Year. Mm -hmm. We're going to try to continue that because this is the best deal on the market. Yeah. You get a fantastic presentation. Yeah. You get how many cigars are you get in there? Five. You cigars? get five cigars. What do we get? You get five toros. You got your Nica Puro, your Connecticut Tempest Prensado, and a Black Market. So you have. Yeah, a broad flavor. You get a nice too. broad flavor profile. It'll please any smoker. Uh, plus, you get one of our uh, Hendrix FX3 lighters, and it. it's a triple torch butane lighter um, with a little um, punch on the bottom of it. And it's it's a fantastic lighter. I love it. Um, you know, I since I took the position, I keep having people come up to me. That's one of the best lighters I've ever gotten. You know. Well, not only that, it's one of the best deals. So yeah. if you're, I mean, if you're shopping, the presentation is great. If you don't know what to get, uh, the person that you are gifting. An Alec Bradley sampler here, this tubo collection with the lighter. Yeah. You can't beat the price point. You would spend fifty five on the lighter, you're getting the cigars and the lighter for fifty five. You probably spend more than fifty five. You get a you get a you get a wow. red bow and toss it on that and that's mm -hmm. a gift. And you don't need. even need to wrap it. It's just beautiful all the way through. Absolutely. I agree with that. Yep. So another one of our favorites here in the shop is the black market filthy hooligan yes yes so it is a big favorite in the shop we have the candelas <laughs> here we the, um the, the there's a new one coming out what's yes. going on we well so the filthy hooligan this year is going to get its it's all of its own graphics right. so it's going to have its new band um it it's going to have a new box on the band. it has filthy hooligan on the band uh we are uh not a picture of our band not it's your band no. no we did uh we did a uh, little change up uh, this year, the Filthy Hooligan will be a barber pole. Um, so it, it, we're looking to see if we can, you know, do something different here. Yeah. Over the last three years, we've released it. You know, it's it's done very well. But this year, we wanted, you know, Candelas are, are great smokes if it falls in your flavor profile. But very niche. Yeah, very, very niche. So um, we wanted to try something a little bit different this year. And we've, we've noticed that, you know, barber poles seem to be something that's actually a little hot on the market right now. So we're going to dip our toe in and see what, where we go with that, you know. What's the wrapper going to be? Um, you're looking at a Havano wrapper with the Kendall. Yeah, and the probably the same is, seed there, but yeah. just uh, just some fermentation. Yeah, and just absolutely. For anybody out there, a Candela is a, a green wrap cigar essentially. It's great for St. Patrick's Day, and that's when Alec Bradley releases this cigar. 
uh, candela, there's just the fermentation process is stopped. Right. Unnaturally. Yeah. It's stopped, and uh, it's actually a very young leaf. Mm -hmm. But then the fermentation process doesn't go, and it cannot continue to go. It right. stays green. You know a little bit about that process? I know a little bit about it. Not much. Yeah. We'll get into that. In we we should ask Certified Tobacconist Ed. <laughs> certified Tobacconist Ed. He described Randy. it very well. <laughs> <laughs> described as no one really knows how it goes. But that was a lot of fun. We appreciate it, Ryan. Absolutely. Stopping by and talking Absolutely. some Alec Bradley cigars. Right. Um, cigar of the Year 2011, the sampler pack is awesome. Look for the Filthy Hooligan, Smoke a Giant Sanctum. <laughs> Giant. Look for the limited release of Post the Embargo. Post Embargo. Cool, beautiful band. Love what they did there. They did the play. You got the USA colors, uh, but also tying it in with the colors of countries that it's made. Great, I like it a lot. Great, a great little uh, saying on it. Taste the past. Bridge the gap. Enjoy, enjoy the, the future. Absolutely. So it's a, it's I'll what tell you it's what, Alec Bradley's marketing is becoming second to none. I think Thank they're you. really Thank you. out there and grabbing it. So if you haven't smoked an Alec Bradley cigar, you got to come in and grab one. Go to your local tobacconist. Ask for Alec Bradley. Tell them Ryan sent you. They probably won't do anything for you, <laughs> but you're going to smoke a great cigar. But they won't throw you out either. No. The cigar is the deal. Well, that concludes this edition of Inside the Humidor. Thanks for watching. Get out there and burn one. Thank you guys for having me. Take care, everybody. Thank you for watching Inside the Humidor. Ryan, that was awesome. Thank really you. appreciate Thank it, you for having man. Me. Absolutely. It's great having you. Where can they find you? Where can they find me? On Instagram or Instagram? Twitter? Uh, very simple. Rye the Cigar Guy. Rye, the right. cigar guy. At what? Twitter? Everything. Twitter, Instagram. You name it. He My owns space. the entire MySpace. <laughs> he, has, he has that on lockdown everywhere. Ed, Copy. where can they find you? Oh, at Ed at smokestackpgh.com. If you have any questions about the show or something you'd like to me to pass along to Ryan and get the answer for you on another show, I can do that. Uh, also, you can call us 412 375 Seven six two seven, and I'm usually here most days, Monday through Friday. You can get hold of us here, and uh, don't forget to stop in, and give a chance uh, for someone at Christmas time to enjoy Alec Bradley cigars with these great gift sets. Um, and Alec Bradley has something from a Corona in the uh, American Classic line, absolutely below five dollars, all yeah. the way up to twelve and a half dollar Prince Otto's. Or your fine and rare. Or fine and rare. Yeah. That's right. Yeah, we have a select secret retailer. fine and rare. We have select secret retailers. We still have them. You're being very modest, Ed. You're a select well, retailer. Appreciate <laughs> you tuning in. Stop down at the stack, man, and see what we've been doing. We got an expansion going on. It's under construction right now. We're super excited about it. Ed and I will be in Nicaragua next week, so we'll catch you in a couple weeks with all the stories of Nicaragua and the AJ Fernandez factory. You can find me here at the stack, maybe. You can call me on my cell phone. I don't care. 412-758-5973. Answer any question any time of day. Bold.